All of us use a lot of energy, especially after lunch. We use energy to keep our heart beating, to keep our muscles moving, to keep the electrical activity of our brain going. And right now, we're using a lot of other energy, electricity for the lights in this room, electricity for the PA system that we have, for the air handling. And all of that electricity has to come from somewhere, right? So in the United States, we get our electricity from many, many different sources. And we have to be concerned about those sources because it's a shared goal of all of us to try to get more renewable energy sources for electricity so we aren't so reliant on fossil fuels. In the United States right now, we get about a third of our electricity generated from natural gas, another third roughly from coal, and then we have other sources. Even with all of the wind turbines that we see all over the countryside, we barely get 6% of our electricity from wind. And nowadays, it's less than 1% of our electricity comes from photovoltaic panels. So I'm often asked, why is it taking so long? Why can't we get more and more of those sources out there? And as I'm going to explain today, one of the engineering challenges that we have to be aware of is the fact that we don't store electricity on our grid. If you walk into a dark room and flip the power switch and the lights come on, the electricity you are using is generated right at that instant at some generating plant. It wasn't generated in advance for you to use. It's there right when you need it. Now, in the state of Montana, we make about half of our electricity by burning coal. We also have a lot, about a third of our electricity comes from hydro plants, and the rest is from wind. So we're a little bit farther along, perhaps, than other parts of the country, but we still have a long way to go. And that's what I'd like to talk about today. But before I do, when I'm not giving lectures and things like that, one of the things I like to do is to go run. And some of you might have thought when you saw me running in here that I've seen that turkey before. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things I get to do on Thanksgiving Day is I wear a turkey suit and I run in the Huffing for Stuffing race. I'm one of the Smoke the Turkey runners for that event. Now, when I go running, of course, I'm not being powered by our electrical grid. Instead, I've eaten some food and had some drinks beforehand. My body stores that energy, and then I can use it later. And that's a very natural way for us to think about how these things work. Now, if I'm running, one of the things I'm concerned about is what energy is available in my food. And if I look at the label on a one-liter bottle of a sugary cola, I can add it up and it says there are 500 calories, 500 dietetic calories in that beverage. Calories is a measure of energy. So the energy is telling us how much we have to move or heat something up. So the number of calories in that item is telling us how much energy is there. Now a recommended daily allowance of calories is about 2,000. So it works out that all of you sitting here right now are burning about one and a half calories per minute. So good job. Okay. So if you sit here long enough, you will burn 2,000 calories for the, for the whole day. Now, a few years ago, when I was uh, just starting out running, I had an opportunity to do a treadmill test. This is a test where you get on a treadmill and somebody cracks the whip and tells you to run and you're wearing a mask to measure your oxygen uptake. And it turns out for me, that I burn about 15 calories per minute if I'm running at a rate I can keep up for a whole hour. So about 10 times the amount of energy per minute than just sitting still. So that question then is, if I were to try to use the same amount of energy and store it electrically in a AA battery, you're all familiar with these, this AA battery would only be able to hold about three calories of energy. So if I wanted the same amount of energy stored that I get in a liter of soda pop, I would need 167 of these batteries, and I'd have to have some compartment to open up to put all those in there. At the rate of 15 calories per minute, a 500 calorie allotment only powers me for about half an hour of running. Then I need to have some stored energy to keep going after that, or I'd have to replace all those batteries out of the pack. Now, this is a problem for us in the electrical grid and in other areas, this ability to store energy. That 500 calories in a liter of pop, if I had a liter of gasoline, that's an extremely good way to store energy. It's more than 8,000 equivalent calories in that one liter of gasoline. 
And unfortunately for us in the electrical grid, the best available rechargeable batteries right now that you might use in a cell phone or in an electric car only hold about 200 calories of energy in that same liter. So this is one of the reasons we aren't all immediately driving electric vehicles because gasoline, like it or not, is an extremely efficient transportation fuel. But that's another, that's another TED talk for another time. But if we look at how we actually operate on our electrical grid, what that means in, in the United States and other countries is we have many, many, many generating plants, and we have many, many users, and they're interconnected with transmission lines. And the design of this has been engineered to make it very reliable. More than 99.9% .9 reliability, when you turn on a switch, the lights come on. And the grid allows us to be able to lose a generating plant or lose a transmission line, and there's redundancy. We can pick up that load someplace else. What the grid doesn't do, though, is store energy, like I mentioned. So 24 hours a day, every day, every second, all the electric utilities are monitoring how much electricity is being used on the grid at that instant, and they are generating exactly that same amount. So all day long, this is being monitored so that the electricity generated exactly matches what we use. Did you realize that? So if we look at electricity demand for a city throughout the day, at night we do use some electricity. We need street lights, and we need to have our refrigerators keeping things cold and so forth. In the morning, we get up, turn on some lights, make some coffee, those sorts of things, our demand goes up a little bit. So the utilities actually produce a little more electricity to exactly match what we use. Then as the sun comes up, we don't need as much electricity for lighting during the day. And then what happens at 5 or 5.30 when we get home from work? Suddenly the TV is turned on, the, we're cooking dinner, we're doing all those things, and the electricity demand goes way up at that point. And so the predictability of that load allows the utilities to start the generators to make the electricity that we need at that time. Okay, that sounds great. Now we all go out and uh, put in a whole bunch of photovoltaic panels on our roof, right? That's a good green thing to do. Now, what that will do, of course, is create lots of electricity when the sun is up in the middle of the day and we've got all that electricity. But remember what I said about the grid? We don't have a good way to take that extra electricity in the middle of the day and save it up for later on. Okay? So what we need to do is figure out better ways, more efficient ways to store that extra electricity so that we can use it later, for instance, when the sun goes down late in the afternoon. Now, there are some ways to store electrical energy. One of them is gravity storage. If we have extra electricity, we pump water from a low reservoir to a high reservoir, and then we run that, uh, that water down through a turbine later and make electricity again out of that. There's electrolysis, which I'm very interested in, which is taking H2O, regular water. If we run electricity through that water, we can separate the hydrogen and oxygen into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, and the hydrogen gas then we can burn later and use that in a turbine to make electricity. And when you burn hydrogen, the nice thing is, the byproduct of that is water. Okay, no pollution out of that type of an approach. Now, what can all of you do? Can you design new ways of, of storing electrical energy? Maybe some of you can, or maybe some of your children will work in that area. But what I really th want to encourage you to do is to look at ways that you can encourage investment in research and development in renewable energy and in renewable storage, because if we could store more electricity, that would enable us to use this untapped resource that we have out there. It's also important to have public policies and incentives for our utilities to invest in that storage capability. As soon as that happens, then the extra photovoltaic capacity will really make a lot of sense. Oh, I've run out of time, so I've got to start using a little bit more energy. But thanks very much.